All right, so what we'll do now is go ahead and get set up with some custom fonts. So um, we'll go to Google and we'll type in Google fonts and I'll click on this top link, fonts.google.com. And if you're on this page here, the about page, just click on the top link, fonts one. Um, and you can see a bunch of different fonts. So Google fonts, just as the name suggests, uh, provides you with a ton of different fonts you can use. You can search for fonts here. You can type your own sentence uh, and see how, the, how it looks in that font. Um, you can change the size real quick here. So go ahead and choose a font that you like. Um, I'm gonna use Roboto or Roboto, I don't know how you say that, but I'll take that from here. So if I click on it, uh, it will show me it in more detail and I can see the individual fonts here. So I can see the italic or the light italic, um, but I'm just gonna download them all. So I'll click download font family. You can download individual ones if you only want one of them or two of them, um, but I've clicked download and it give me this file. So I can see I've got this file here, or this folder, and it's got all the fonts inside. So what I'll do is move them into my uh, project. So I'll go to the, the left, the File Explorer, and I'll create a folder inside of Assets called uh, Fonts. So I'll right click on the Assets folder, and I'll name the folder Fonts. And what I'll do is move all of these, only the TTF files, not the TXT, just the uh, TTF, which are font files, and I'll move them into the fonts folder, like that. So they're all there now. Um, so we can go ahead and add those to the project. So how do we do that? Well, what we're gonna do is use something called Expo Splash Screen. So if you Google Expo, Expo Splash Screen, you should find this top link. And what this is gonna do is provide us the ability to show the splash screen until uh, we've loaded the fonts and then we'll hide it again. So I'll scroll down and how you install it is just by running expo install expo dash splash dash screen. So let's go ahead and run that. Oops, I'll uh, stop that. And I'll paste the command and run it. And we should be good to go now. So I've installed it, great. You can see there are some, uh, some examples here, some usage examples. We're pretty much gonna be following this, but I will just uh, go through it with you uh, bit by bit and um, so there's no need for you to copy that. So let me close down the file explorer. So underneath there, what we're gonna do is basically stop the splash screen from hiding. Um, so in order to do that, we have to add the import. So I'll say import um, all, so star as splash screen uh, from, oops, from expo dash splash dash screen. And then underneath there, I'll say splash screen dot uh, prevent auto hide async. So I'll press, uh, I'll add that. If I save it now and then start this up, you should see the splash screen will stay there and you won't be able to see the app. And we should not see the app. So this is what I meant. So you can see the splash screen here and this splash screen image is coming from the assets and we've got this splash.png file. Um, so we will change this later, but that's what you're seeing. Uh, and because we've added the screen, we basically said don't um, don't hide the splash screen. So the reason we don't want to hide it is because we're going to hide it manually once we've loaded the fonts. So if I scroll down to, in fact, I'll, cl I'll collapse this tab navigator. And if I scroll down to my app, in there, right above the return statement, I'm going to add a state variable. So I'll say const, and then in square brackets, I'm going to say app is loaded, and then set app is loaded equals use state and I add this import from react so make sure you've got the import where is it use state right here import use state from react um, so we've got this state variable and state variables if you didn't know um, when these are changed these will uh, re-render the component you'll see how this is used shortly though but this use state returns an array with two properties so we're destructuring it here um, so the first one is the state variable itself, and the second one is just the function you call to actually set this or change the value. So we're gonna default this to false. So inside those parentheses, set, uh, put false in there, which basically says by default, or well, initially this will be set to false. Because when the app first loads, it hasn't finished loading yet. So anyway, underneath there, we'll say use effect, and make sure to import that from uh, React also, use effect. Um, and then in there, I'm gonna put parentheses, and it takes a function, so this is a function to run. So use effect is essentially a side effect, which is, a side effect is basically anything not directly related to the output of the app. 
okay? So what this is gonna be is where we load the fonts. A typical side effect is loading posts or loading users or any other data for that matter. Um, so yeah, we're gonna load the, the, the fonts in here. But the second parameter after the function is gonna be the dependency list. Now we're gonna put it as an empty dependency list, so an empty array. And what this means is this code in here will only run on the first render. We only wanna load the fonts on the first render. We don't wanna load the fonts any other time. So to load a font, we actually wanna install it from the Expo font package, which allows us to well, load fonts. So I'll go back to my terminal, I'll stop it, and I'm gonna run Expo install uh, Expo-font. Okay, so I've got that, or well, I'm running that. And we can load a font in here by using that package, but in order to do so, we need to actually import it. So at the top, I'll say import star for all as font uh, from, and then expo-font. So uh, once, we've, once we've got that import, we can go down to the use effect, uh, and what I'm gonna do is just say font.load async. And inside here, I'll put my curly braces, and this is gonna be any of the fonts we want. Oops, this will be any of the fonts we wanna load. Now, this is an async function, so we have to actually um, await it. But because we're awaiting it, we actually need to make the function this is in async. So we should put async in front of the function here. The problem is we don't use async functions in use effect like this. So what we're gonna do is uh, essentially declare an async function. So just above that, I'll say const um, prepare equals, uh, and this will be an async function, async, and set it to an empty parameter list, and just a function like this. So it's an empty function, uh, and I'm gonna move this inside of there. So because I've created an, an async function, we can use this. All right, so we've declared the function, but we haven't called it yet, so underneath that, I'm just gonna say prepare, like that. So basically what I've just done, because we can't use the await keyword inside of the use effect, I've created a function, and now we're not using it inside the use effect, we're actually using it inside of this prepare function. And then underneath, I've just called that right there. This is the same way you'll see Expo doing it here. You see they're creating an async function prepare inside the use effect, so we're essentially doing the exact same thing. But this load async can technically fail, so what we're gonna do is just put it inside a try catch. So we'll say try, and then um, move this inside there. And then uh, just add the catch underneath to catch. E for error, and then if there's an error, we'll just say console.log E. So how do we load a font? Well, we have our fonts in this uh, in this fonts folder right here. So I mean, this is a bit big, you can see the full name. So roboto-black, roboto-black italic, and bold, bold italic, and so on. Um, so all we need to do is reference those uh, files. So this is an object, you see by the curly braces. So we're gonna say uh, black and set this to uh, the font file so we can import it from here using require, require um, dot slash uh, oops, assets slash fonts and then slash the name of the the, um, the name of the font package, which in this case is Roboto dash black, Roboto dash uh, oops dash black dot t t f. So this name should match up there, and this now will load that font. So what we need to do is basically copy this line and repeat it for every single one of these. So I will do this, uh, if you don't want to type this all out manually, you can go to the description of this video and find the GitHub link and just copy and paste the code, this code from here directly. So go to the GitHub link, um, go to app.js and then copy and paste this block of code and then uh, you'll be good to go. But uh, I'll do it myself and it should look something like this. So I've uh, copied all those uh, and I've got all the lines. So all of those fonts have now, are now being imported when we run this code. Let me close the file explorer down. So when this runs now, this will load all of those fonts. So after we've done with that, what do we want to do? Well, we want to set the set the app as loaded. So we use this, this variable here, set app is loaded. And we can paste it underneath like this and set it to true, just to tell the uh, component that this app has loaded. Now if it fails and we go to the catch block, we still want to set the app as loaded. We don't want to prevent it from being loaded just because um, the fonts have uh, failed to load. So we can put it there. But an even better way, rather than copying and pasting these lines twice, would be to get rid of them from there and just add a finally block. So finally, 
and like that, and just put it in there. So the finally block will run after the try and the catch. Um, regardless of which one was hit, it will always run last. So after both of those have run, or one or both, you know what I mean, um, it will run that. So great, this will load the fonts. Now underneath there, so underneath that whole use effect, we're gonna say const on layout equals, and we'll set this as use uh, callback. So use callback basically saves uh, a, a memorized version of the function, which essentially means it's not gonna recreate this function on every render. Uh, but inside there, we'll say async, it's gonna be an async function, um, and I put my function block there, uh, and the second parameter is the dependency list uh, for this use callback, and it's just gonna be a, um, a square brackets with app is loaded. So every time the app is loaded changes, it will redo this function basically. And in there, we'll just say if uh, app is loaded, we'll just say await. So we've got a wait there, which is why we have async here. Um, splash screen dot hide async. Oops, hide async like that. Great, so this will now hide the app. So what we're gonna do with that on layout is just move it to uh, this view. So in the view here, we'll just say on uh, layout and paste that in there. So on layout on a view is basically uh, when this whole view is calculated or when it changes. So anytime the view changes, it will run this. So if I save it and run this, and I refresh the app, you're actually gonna see that this hasn't worked. Now the reason for that is quite simple, it's because this on layout will run every time the view changes, but because it, it rendered the first time and went straight to there, um, the view hasn't actually changed, so it's not run this yet. So all we need to do is make the view change. So it's very simple, we'll just say if, and then not, app is loaded, we'll just return uh, null, like that. So when the app is not loaded, instead of returning this element here with all the navigation stuff, we'll just return null. If I save it now, and uh, I think I need to refresh this, you'll see we get the app again. So by setting this to null, it means that when this was loaded, it instead jumped to here and, and skipped this part. And since this is a different view to that, this on layout was run and we uh, hid the splash screen. So there we go. Um, we're now showing a splash screen very briefly when the app is, um, when the app is loading, i.e. when the fonts are being loaded, and we hide it once we've loaded everything we need to load.